What is going on guys, it's Modern Dwarf here, welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to run Gen 2 Linux distro on your jailbroken PS4 on 5.05. So this is another Linux distro that you can install on your PS4 just like uh, PS Zeta. There's actually quite a few Linux distros available now but uh, the two big ones seem to be PS Zeta or PSX ITA Arch Linux, I'm just going to refer to it as PS Zeta. So there's that operating system and the reason that that's really common is it was one of the first ones and it has, you know, uh, drivers built in, you know, it's got Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in, it's got a bunch of emulators and Steam built into it. So it's pretty much ready to go as soon as you get booted up into it. Uh, this is similar, so Gen 2 Linux has a bunch of drivers built in, uh, it's got, uh, you know, Wi-Fi drivers, Bluetooth, it's got the, you know, hardware acceleration built in, it's got the... Uh, you know, emulators and Steam, just like PS Zeta. So it's just a different distro that you can install. Just, you know, you can use whichever one you prefer. One is not necessarily better than the other. It's just down to your personal preference. But sometimes you might have trouble installing PS Zeta on your model of PS4. So maybe it's worthwhile trying uh, Gen 2 Linux if you can't install PS Zeta or vice versa. And the reason I'm not covering any of the other Linux operating systems uh, is because a lot of them require you to install the drivers manually, uh, whereas this has all the drivers built in, just like PS Zeta. So let's get into this. So to install Gen 2 Linux, what you're going to need to do is download the image file, so the PS4 Gen 2 image file, which will be linked in the description, along with the tools required to mount that image file to an external device. You have to boot into Linux using an external drive, like a USB stick or external hard drive, um, or you can even use like an SSD that's got a SATA to USB adapter. You can use that to boot into Linux. You can't boot from the internal hard drive right now, so it has to be from an external device. Now, I wouldn't recommend if you're going to be playing games on uh, Gen 2 Linux, then I would not recommend using a USB 2.0 uh, USB stick. Use a USB 3 USB stick at least for the faster transfer speeds or an external hard drive or SSD. If you are going to use a USB 2, that's fine for just like browsing the web and just using it as a desktop computer. But if you're going to be running games, I would definitely not recommend using a USB 2 USB stick. And I know I'm a bit late to the party on this, but Gen 2 Linux distro was not working on my PS4, um, on either of my PS4s at the time. Uh, but that's since been fixed now. The website's been updated and the Linux loader's been updated. So it seems to, you know, I don't have any issues with it anymore, which is why I'm now able to make this tutorial. So if you were having problems trying to get Gen 2 running on your PS4 before a few weeks ago, then try it now and you might have success with it. So anyway, let's get into this. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to mount the image to our external device. So if, you, if you're using a USB drive, then you're going to use Rufus. So if you open up Rufus, select your USB drive, click select for the image file, and then browse for the Gen 2 image, click open, and then just click start. Make sure you back up any data that's already on your USB uh, drive because it will erase any stuff that's already on the drive. And then once you've done that, you can click start and it will go ahead and mount the Gen 2 image to your USB drive. Now, if you are not using a USB drive, if you're using an external hard drive or an SSD that's connected to your computer with a SATA to USB adapter, then you can use Etcher because you won't have the option in Rufus to select your external drive because Rufus only works with the USB sticks. So we're going to use Etcher instead because I'm going to be mounting it to an SSD. So I'm going to select the image just like we did in Rufus and then change and I'm going to select my SSD instead of my USB drive and flash the image to the drive. So it's going to create two partitions on your USB drive. One is going to be a 200 megabyte FAT32 partition, which is going to contain the bootloader files for Linux so that you can get booted into Linux on your PS4. And then the other partition is going to be a 10 gigabyte partition that has the Gen 2 image mounted to it. And then anything else is just going to be leftover space. And when flashing in Etcher, what will happen is once it gets to 100%, it does like a validating step. Uh, and then when it's done with that, it unmounts the drive. So you'll need to unplug the drive, plug it back in in order for it to be remounted back to the computer so that we can check to make sure it's created all the partitions successfully. There we go. It popped up there. Local disk I, 200 megabyte partition. 
with our bootloader files on there. And the 10 gigabyte partition is ext4 format, so it's not going to be detectable by Windows. But you can check by going into disk management. So if you type in disk in the start menu and select disk mgmt.msc, or if you're on the Windows 10 start menu, just search for disk and it will be create and format hard disk partitions, which will take you to the same place. So once you're in disk management, if you find the disk, you can see it's got the 200 megabyte FAT32 partition. It's got the 10 gigabyte partition with the Gen 2 image on there. And then the rest is just leftover space. But we can extend this partition to use the rest of the space once we boot up into Linux. So that's not a problem. And even if the 200 megabyte partition did not appear in uh, your computer, if you're not able, to, if it didn't show up, then it's pro as long as the partition is in there, even if it hasn't assigned a drive letter to it, it doesn't matter. As long as the partition's in there and it's FAT32 and it's 200 megabytes and you've got the 10 gigabyte partition, then you are good to go. So all we have to do now is unplug our SSD or USB drive, external hard drive, whatever you're using and plug it into your PS4. Okay, so once you're on the PS4, make sure you plug in your keyboard and mouse. And then what we're gonna do is head over to the settings and we're gonna go to sound and screen. And then we're gonna go to video output settings and make sure the resolution is set to 1080p. If it's set higher, like 4K on a PS4 Pro, then you'll have this issue where you won't regain signal once you boot into Linux. You'll lose signal for a while and then you won't regain it. So you want to be able to regain the signal. So we're going to select 1080p. Make sure HDR is turned off as well. And then you should be good to go. So then we're going to go onto the internet browser and we're going to head to this website here, which is ps4gen2.github.io. So just type that into the URL bar on the PS4. When you first boot into this, it will cache the page for offline use. So that'll take a little while, but once it's done, it should take you here to the payloads. So the payloads we're looking for are the Gen 2 one gigabyte and Gen 2 three gigabyte payloads. Uh, if they're not here on the home page, then they might be in one of these sub menus down here, but they should be on there somewhere. And don't worry if the web page looks a little different because they do change the theme every now and then. So it may look a little bit different to how it looks here, but it should still be the same. It should still have the payloads on here. So which one do we choose, the three gigabyte or the one gigabyte version? So this relates to how much memory is going to be allocated in the PS4. So the PS4 has eight gigabytes of RAM and some of that has to be allocated as video memory, VRAM, uh, for the GPU and the rest is just system memory. So if you go with the one gigabyte version, that gives you just one gigabyte of VRAM and seven gigabytes of system memory. And then you have the three gigabyte version, which of course is three gigabytes allocated as VRAM and then five gigabytes left over for system memory. So I think that's a bit of a better balance. So I'll be going for that one. And if you run the payload and you keep getting out of memory errors every time you try and run it, then make sure you press options, go to settings, delete your cookies and your website data and then also go to browsing history and delete your browsing history as well. And then run the payload or close the browser, reopen it and then run the payload again. That should clear up more system memory so that you don't run into as many out of memory errors. And then we can run the payload here. So once it runs, first time you do this, it's possible your PS4 might crash. If it does just reboot and run the payload again, it's not a big deal but uh, hopefully it will not crash. And what should happen is your screen will go black, you'll lose signal for a few seconds, and then you should regain the signal again if you had your output setting set to 1080p. There you go, as you can see, we've got our signal back and now it's booting into Gen 2 Linux. And there you go, as you can see, we're booted into Linux already, already booted into Gen 2. That's one of the advantages of using Gen 2 Linux over PS Zeta. With PS Zeta, you have to initially install the distro on the PS4. So you have to type in commands in the shell on the PS4 to install it. And then that takes about 10 to 20 minutes to install the operating system, which uh, obviously isn't great. Whereas with this, it boots in like pretty much instantly. It only takes a few seconds and we're into the distro. So there's a few things that we need to set up first of all. So I'm going to switch over to my keyboard and mouse here. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is just customize the operating system a little bit to my liking. So I'm going to right click and unlock widgets here on the top bar and then right click and edit panel, I believe. And then I'm just going to remove that panel and then right click and add a panel, default panel, which will add it in over here. And then I'm going to right click and edit panel again and then click and drag over screen edge and I'm going to drag it down to the bottom just so I have it kind of more like the kind of windows layout. So there we go. So I now have like a little start menu here in the bottom left hand corner. So I just kind of prefer it like this. But you can, of course, just customize it the way you prefer. So down here, you've got your network options. If you click this, you have wired or wireless. So you can plug in your Ethernet cable to get a direct connection. Uh, if you have, if the Wi-Fi drivers are working on your PS4, you can also enable Wi-Fi. So if I check that box there on the left, you can see all the Wi-Fi networks show up and I can connect to one if I want. Obviously, I'm just going to stick with uh, a wired connection for now. Uh, you've also got a controller icon down here. So this can basically set up your controller for all the different emulators, like a universal controller setup so that you don't have to manually set up all the binds for your PS4 controller in every emulator that you use. So that's a pretty handy feature there as well. So a lot of the stuff that we have built in here, as you can see, we've got, you know, a web browser, system settings, file manager, uh, you know, info center, giving you specs, obviously the partition editor. If we go to applications, you've got all of your emulators and, uh, you know, Steam and stuff like that's all built in here. You've got RetroArch, which is just like the RetroArch version on the Nintendo Switch got all of that stuff you've got a Wii and GameCube emulator PlayStation 1 PlayStation 2 PSP emulator uh, Lutris which is you know a game launcher for your PC games you've also got uh, you know Steam built in obviously you've got Sega Saturn emulator uh, Muppin 64 Nintendo 64 emulator built in there and then you've got like some graphics uh, image editors and stuff like that uh, internet browsers, Discord, FTP client, stuff like that built in. Multimedia, you've got VLC media player, Kodi, uh, some converters. And then more system settings and tools. And utilities. And of course, you also have Wine built in as well. So you can run uh, Windows applications on Linux as well. So yeah, quite a lot of good stuff that's built in there. And here's a quick example of, you know, how to set up some of these emulators. If I go on to the, the Wii U emulator here, or just not Wii U, the Wii emulator, uh, Dolphin Wii and GameCube emulator, you can configure your controller if it's not already set up by going to options and then controller settings, standard controllers configure, and then you just select your Sony computer entertainment wireless controller. And then you can just start binding all the different buttons on your gamepad. You can, of course, change the, the graphics settings as well. If you go into graphics, you can see you've got Vulkan, which it seems to be set to by default. You can also run OpenGL as well, whichever one runs best. And of course, you can set up, you know, can change the resolution to a lower resolution so it runs better. Any of that kind of stuff. And then you can just run your game. Obviously, I don't have any games downloaded just now, but I recorded a little while ago some other games running on Gen 2 on PS4 Linux. So as you can see, we've got Mario Kart uh, Wii running here on the PS4. Just a, you know, it's kind of weird running a Wii game on a PS4, but there you go. Uh, also, we have uh, like Doom running on Steam, which runs through Proton because Doom can't run on Linux natively. But through Proton using Steam Play, you can play uh, games like Doom and Wolfenstein. Any game that supports OpenGL or Vulkan you should be able to run on your PS4. Also, we have uh, like games like uh, Left 4 Dead. Any Valve games use OpenGL, as far as I'm aware, like Half-Life and um, you know Left 4 Dead and CSGO, games like that, Portal. They all use OpenGL, so they can run natively on the PS4 as well using PS4 Linux. So pretty awesome right there. Also, we've got CMU running. This emulator does not come with uh, the distro, but uh, you can install it and set it up. If you want me to do a tutorial on how to set up CMU, then I can show you guys how to do that. As you can see, I've got Mario Kart 8 running here on the PS4, which is pretty awesome. And 
with a bit of configuration I've got the settings running where it's actually running quite well pretty smooth so one of the things we need to do first of all though is we need to extend the storage so if we go to our little start menu here if you search for a uh, gparted which is the partition editor so if we open this program of course it's going to ask for authentication ps4 is the password by default so that is the default password so here we are on gparted so as you can see, we've got our ext4 partition, which is 10 gigabytes. And then we have the rest of the space that's been completely wasted, 221 gigabytes on my SSD. So I want to obviously extend this partition to use the rest of the space of the drive. So to do that, I'm going to select the ext4 partition that has the Gen 2 label, the 10 gigabyte partition. Click the button here to resize slash move the selected partition. And then I'm just going to drag this bar right over to the right. So it's using all the available space. Click resize and then click the tick to apply. And there we go. It only takes a couple seconds. And now we have the full space of the drive available. All 232 gigabytes. So there we go. So the next thing we should do is change the password. Especially if you're going to be logging into things uh, and uh, online things and stuff on your computer here you might want to change the password let's just make this a little bit bigger so if we type in so that there's two accounts set up by default on here there's the ps4 account which is what we're logged into right now and the username is just ps4 and the password is ps4 and then there's the root account which obviously the username is root and the password is again ps4 so we want to change that. So I'm going to do P-A-S-S-W-D to change the password for the PS4 account. Um, and then current password. So I'll put in PS4 and then I'll enter a new password. There we go. That's done. And now we can change the root account. So to do that, we need to log in as the super user. So we'll type in S-U, press enter, and then type in... Uh, the same of oh, the password for the super user, which is PS4 right now. And then we'll change it again by doing P-A-S-S-W-D space root, uh, whoops, root. There we go. New password, which is going to be a new password. And there we go. So I've updated the passwords on both, um, on both accounts. Okay, so now that we've done that, we are pretty good to go. There's a couple of other things that we could do here. So another thing we might want to do is change the portage mirror, which is the server that's used to download all of the packages when you go to install things. So uh, because whoever compiled this version of uh, Gen 2 is in a, one particular country and has probably used a server or set it to a server that they're close to. But if you're somewhere else in the world, then that server might be too slow for you. So you want to select a server that's closer to your region. Um, so to change the portage mirror, we're going to do su login as a super user again, type in your new password. And then we're going to type in nano space forward slash etc forward slash portage forward slash make dot config c o n f and then press enter. And then that should take you here. Try and make this bigger. Okay, so if we scroll down here, you can see we've got uh, portage mirror change for speed, and it is set to a German server by the looks of things, which is uh, not what I want. I want a UK server. So I'm going to go onto the internet browser and search for uh, Gen 2 portage mirrors. I guess I'll link this in the description. So Gen 2 source mirrors. Okay, so if I select a UK one and then grab this server right here, which is a UK server. And then, oh, okay. Apparently I have to set up a password thing for this. KDE wallet service, okay. I'll just make a random password for that. Okay, so now we can go ahead and change this to the new server. So I'm just gonna go ahead and backspace all of this and then paste in our UK server instead. So you just select a server that's closer to you, one that's in the same country as you to get the better speed, and then you should be good to go. So to save it, we're just going to control X 
and then Y for yes to save and then press enter and that should save it. And then you can then exit and clear and we are good to go. So what else? Is there anything else? There's a couple of other things that you can do that would be useful. Also, if you want to enable uh, like virtualization, like the virtual manager KVM, then you need to enter one of these two commands, either system control start lib verted or system control enable verted. Uh, it will ask you for the password. So you just press enter, it'll ask you for the, the root password and then you can do that and that should enable virtualization. So yeah, you've basically got like a low end PC, a low end gaming PC is what you have. Uh, you're able to run low end PC games, OpenGL and Vulkan titles. And you can also, of course, run, you know, all the different emulators that are installed here as well. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, before we quit out here, let's just restart because something that people always get confused about for some reason is they think that once you boot into Linux, this is now a Linux machine and it's no longer a PS4 anymore. That is not the case. You can just restart as you'll see here. So I'm going to restart the, the Linux distro and that will boot me back into the PS4's operating system. And uh, yeah, that's basically how it works. So it's more of a dual boot system. So when you first turn on the PS4, it will always just boot into the normal PlayStation 4 operating system. So it never stops being a PlayStation 4. You always have the functionality of your PS4. You can always boot into the PS4 operating system and play your PS4 games and use the console as a PS4, as it's meant to be used. But you also now have this dual boot setup where all you have to do is once you're booted up back into the PS4, if you want to go on Linux, then all you have to do is hop back onto the internet browser, go to that website again and run the payload and then just wait a few seconds and you'll be back in Linux. And it's as simple as that. So obviously this takes a little while to boot up, but not that much longer than a computer, to be honest. So we run the payload, wait a few seconds, we get our black screen. There we go, there's our black screen. And then we get no signal. And as you can see, signal has come back and we're booting back into Gen 2 Linux. So it may take a little bit longer to boot up than your average computer, but honestly, not that much longer. And there we go, we're back. Here's the keyboard and mouse, and now I can start playing PC games and emulators. As you can see here, we've got a channel up here and the videos are playing no problem. So you can go ahead and just use it as a normal computer, access streaming services, YouTube, Netflix, uh, Amazon Prime, whatever, or play games, you your retro games using emulators or play PC games on Steam, totally up to you. You've got all this extra functionality now. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I will hopefully see you guys in the next one.